Good evening and welcome to Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms. This is your host, Raf speaking. Tonight, I have Nyendorf with me. He's emerged from his bunker and has survived the crypto apocalypse. So, Nyendorf, how you doing? Pretty good. Welcome, listeners. All right. Well, it's uh, January 24th. It's a Monday. And today we had an AMA. You were able to, to log in and catch it. Let's, um, oh, before we get to the AMA, let's first go to a very special question of the day. You got one off of Discord. Yes, I did. Um, I, I made sure to get his approval first. It was Jackson MCD, I believe his name is. And uh, he kind of posted this, and it really got me thinking here. And um, his question basically was, is, it seems as though there's only four skills on heroes. You got your two actives and your two passives. And I guess the question is, is, is that enough to make this interesting? What do you think? That's a great question. And a big thank you to Jackson first for all of the Always Sunny in Philadelphia memes that he's dropping in Discord. Those are absolutely my favorite. Oh, those are amazing. <laughs> uh, you got to love some Frank. All right. Well, to the question. <laughs> yeah. I would say, you know, it it does feel kind of limiting, and especially when we learned last week that, you know, they are absolute-based skills, and that, you know, therefore, you know, advanced one on a warrior is the same as advanced one on a thief. And so, you know, I, I, I think it, it could be kind of limiting, um, and although they say that, you know, combat's being balanced around... Uh, the heroes that you have and their their stats and abilities i've seen with other games you know that's a, a great way to add a lot of depth to a combat system um and so i guess i i'm hopeful that that might grow or change over time or maybe the complexity of the skills grows in some way what do you think yeah so i you know again wild speculation here but i kind of have two thoughts i guess the first is that you know, to me, it seems like what they've talked about with this blockchain sort of combat, where you're going to have almost limited interaction. I don't think you could have a, a tree of eight skills. And, you know, think of how many transactions you'd be having to do if you wanted to navigate between eight skills. Sure. Like that doesn't, that kind of seems like that would be difficult, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then secondly, I kind of think that it's possible that these actives and passives could be, um, like we talked about before, say it's evade, right? I mean, that could technically apply to any class, and maybe it isn't as specific. Maybe the actual skills that you're going to spend skill points on, uh, I suppose those could be class-specific skills that we haven't even seen yet, or, or maybe that's um, inherent to the code in the game and not necessarily the blockchain data. So I think we got to remember, too, that there's also a game that is going to be able to, maybe the game makes an assumption that if you're a, a warrior, you have these skills, and it's not necessarily purely blockchain data. So I, that's kind of what I was thinking. That's true. I mean, you could also have, you know, different levels of attack, yeah, as we've seen in some games where you have a, a light attack and maybe a power attack that uses more right. stamina or something like that. So, yeah, I, I think you're right. that They could, certainly could add a, a few layers on top of what we're seeing now. And truthfully, I'm, I'm hopeful that that's the case. I think so. And I think they have to do that because... It's pretty clear to me that the data they included on chain is all the stuff that's important for genetics and maintaining a diverse hero pool. I think on top of that, like you said, your basics, there's no reason to put that data on chain. So, yep. All right. Well, let's go to dev dive section next and give our, our listeners and viewers an update on uh, the current website and, and the state of the, the system of, of what you're building. Yeah, so I've, I've stumbled upon some free time here over the last few days. Um, uh, the Hero Viewer tool, I, th I hope everybody's finding it useful. Um, I've, we've continued to add and, you know, cobble together features, I would say. Um, but the big thing is, is that, you know, with that API that has been behind by several days that the devs have given us, the, those graph QL servers, um, I updated it so that it'll, it's able to pull Hero data directly from the Harmony blockchain. So now as soon as you summon a hero, you can basically go to the site, paste his 
uh, ID number in and pull that data immediately, which is great in my opinion. It's fantastic. Um, Thank you so much for all the extra work on that. Well done. You bet. And then the other two features along with that, um, three actually rather, uh, you can now, if you put two hero IDs in there and you hit the compare button, uh, it'll, it'll highlight in yellow where there are possible mutations. Uh, you know, like if you put a, a monk and a pirate, that'll show up as yellow, you know, and that's kind of inferring that ninja. It doesn't say ninja, but, you know, I, you know that's an improvement we could make in the future. Um, next thing is you can show descendants. Someone in Discord had, had posted that, and then I was, I was, you know, gotten to think, too. It's really interesting to see what have our Gen Zeros produced over their lifetime, and I, it's kind of difficult to see that otherwise. So I also added that feature, so you paste in the hero ID and you hit show descendants and here's a list of uh, all the heroes they've summoned and maybe you uh, I uh, use this tool uh, on your turn I guess you'd say and maybe we can talk about that later if you uh, feel up for it <laughs> yeah well we could cover it now I'm a little bitter uh, <laughs> yeah I uh, decided I was a little jewel strapped and hired him out and I think you found that that was a legendary so I guess I used up uh, my good karma there and uh, it missed out on a big opportunity. but uh, as... Not to pour some salt in, but it was a legendary ninja, and then it was also a rare ninja on the other one. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I know. It's, uh... yeah. I, I try not to think about that, because um, it's uh... certainly the opportunity cost or opportunity benefit was seven and five jewel, respectively. So that's pretty disappointing. All right, uh, uh, moving yeah, on before my Gaia's tears in real life. Uh, sorry, <laughs> springing forth. All right, um, uh, and you know, on the the note of of the website as well, you know, you're also highlighting the possible mutations between skills, and and that's something that I've started yes, to look at and, and track. And so, um, again, that's basic one and basic two compare together to become advanced one, um, and so that that's pretty exciting, and and I think that's going to have well, already we're starting to see the marketplace uh, pick up on, you know, the value of having some of these uh, more advanced skills. And so I believe we saw a tavern listing uh, tonight. Uh, again, today is uh, January 24th on a Monday. Tavern listing for $350 for a hero, a common hero with a transcendent skill. So uh, pretty neat that uh, the, the marketplace is starting to adjust for, for this information already. And it's we're still in the early stages. Yeah, I totally agree. That's really cool to see. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go to the AMA notes. I'm thankful that, that you were able to, to log in and check this out. I had a, a busy day. So uh, go ahead and, and take us away. What stuck out to you first about uh, the AMA? Yeah, let's, let's, a quick rundown here. So the first thing, I, not in chronologi chronological order, of course, but just uh, they mentioned that the Harmony team was creating what they call a quote-unquote task force to help DFK succeed. And to me, I think that's that's huge. That tells me that the Harmony team understands their success. You know, one reached an all-time high, or a couple different all-time highs in the short reign of DeFi Kingdoms here. I think they're understanding that their success is DeFi Kingdoms' success. So mm -hmm. that's really interesting to me. Yeah, that that is fascinating, and you know, especially there's that you know the partnership with the with the grants as well. So. Um, it, it's excited to see yep, that, that that continue to, to grow and, and develop. So, uh, yeah, yeah, very interesting. Tell us about the the scholarship that leads program directly to the next point. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Um, they've continued to talk about this, and the details were really light before, and I think they finally started to add a little bit here. That's interesting. Um, the first thing was is that they actually said that you know these bloater tokens for example are out there on the blockchain and they said if there's if there's developers out there who have new and cool and interesting ways to use that token um, bring it to their attention and it's a possibility if you have a really cool tool um, or a, a you know maybe it's a side game or something to do with these on-chain tokens they might actually give you some grant money I assume in the form of Jewel, either from Harmony and I think with the cost share of, of from their you know pockets as well. So you just imagine that you know if you 
if you've got like I don't know, maybe you're a, a, a real life fishing fan and you want to create a fishing game and you, you create it and you're pulling out bloaters. I, that was kind of what they alluded to, but that's just a really interesting idea. <laughs> I can't the, wait the, for the, the candy crush of bloaters. <laughs> oh, yes. The creativity of this community, though, I think is going to take that places. Yeah, that's that's really neat. Um, you know, I, I, I keep thinking about, you know, one of my favorite genres of all time is final fantasy or well i guess not a genre yep. rpg but uh you know a game a game style or and in a couple of those games they have um mini games where you actually play with cards um and, and you actually play a card game it's like a game within the game um that would be a really oh yeah neat or cool way that you could somehow use your your heroes to do some kind of light battle um so that's that's really impressive i i hadn't heard this at all before we talked so i gosh i'm really excited about this what else do you have oh absolutely yeah and then along that lines of the scholarship they they talked a little bit more about that idea of um the scholarship meaning if you're a person who is a quote-unquote a summoner who you basically have too many heroes to quest out um that you can put those guys up for rent and some of the you know these people who can't maybe afford a hero at this point at current prices um, could at least use your hero um, and i think the, the point of that would be that you get a little bit of the rewards of that as the hero owner but i you mean your hero also gains the xp so i mean that's you know great it's kind that, of a that way my, my gen zero thoughts. heroes can go out and earn an egg for someone else fantastic <laughs> uh, yeah, no doubt, right? They'll summon legendaries and, and uh, earn eggs for others. Now, uh, all joking and bitterness yeah. aside, um, that's that's really cool. <laughs> um, you know, that's just a, a great way for for people to be able to, you know, kind of pay it forward, give back to the community. I know something that, and again, I I, I want to tease this out there um, as we haven't talked about it in a while. And our subscriber numbers are starting to go up. Um, and we're probably within a week's time away from uh, doing our, our first uh, subscriber milestone. And so our first subscriber milestone oh, is getting cool. to uh, 100, and we're going to give away access to um, 10 of our free subscribers. And so um, we also have access right now that we're giving out to our paid subscribers. And, you know, they can... Uh, for listeners out there or viewers out there, uh, you can access that through Anchor, and so we'll put that in the show notes uh, if you're interested in getting the tavern system right away, which is now blockchain powered. Um, and then, of course, if you know uh, you're budget constrained or that's just you're not in it for subscribing, that's fine too. We're going to be giving away uh, 10 uh, of those access alerts uh, to our system. Um, and probably do that on on a live stream uh, here in the next week or so. Yeah, that sounds That's great. Course, once we get to the the 100 mark, and then our next milestone is the 200 subscriber mark, and our goal there is, uh, or our incentive there is, we're going to be allowing uh, our our user base to to hire. Um, uh, essentially our, our heroes for summoning and so you get to use it a, a gen zero hero for summoning and, and you could uh, you could choose to, to rent them out like I did and you get the dual proceeds or you can hire them out and uh, we're just going to charge you the ad cost fee um, and so you could either pair our two heroes together again we have a, a monk fisher and we have a pirate gardener or uh, you could take uh, one of those and, and try to hire out uh, someone else in, inside the tavern. So I'm, I'm really excited about doing that. I, th I think that'll be a lot of fun for either our, our, our Discord um, community or, our, you know, just our, our listening and viewer community out there. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. All right. Well, uh, I think that sums it up for scholarships. Uh, let's talk about the, the garden policy updates. Yeah, so this one they kind of mentioned a little bit in passing. I probably won't say a whole lot other than it kind of seemed as though moving forward they want to get rid of, or not get rid of per se, but maybe sunset some of the the garden pairs that don't have jewel in them or maybe some yeah. of the tokens that it doesn't make as much sense anymore. Yeah. Um, and, and we saw that with, was it super bid already, I think? So I think they're just going to keep, you know, trimming the weeds, if you will. There. Right. Right. Yeah. But the next two points here are big, so let's let's keep let's get to these guys. Yeah, keep rolling. Uh, they, 
Yeah, the, the they had a, a quite a bit of talk about other blockchains. Uh, so the first thing they mentioned was that um, Phantom, the the Phantom blockchain on its own, I don't know if it was internally or members of their community, went and they created a DEX that or pool, sorry, on one of their DEXs for Jewel on their own, which is really interesting because it shows they're they're sort of gearing up for that thought and. The Phantom has been on a lot of people's shortlists as for one of the other realms right. after it, Avalanche. So I thought that was really interesting. It sounds like there might be some gears moving. Yeah. Not official DFK gears, but, you know, kind of like the, the community <laughs> willing it, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I would say there's been enough hints dropped here and there that I that one's got to be on the shortlist. You're right about that. I would I would think so. And then the next blockchain they talked about was was the, actually that Polygon had reached out to them. Again, another one that was kind of on a lot of people's shortlist. And apparently that's uh, a common thing for Polygon is that they, they're they interested in in either replicating games with the, you know, the original game developer's consent, it seemed, or bridging them. And I think in DFK's world, that would be bridging in the form of a new realm. So in that, and I believe it was I forget who was talking, but they said that was very interesting to the devs of DeFi Kingdoms. So yeah. I'm sure we'll hear more on that. You know, hearing this, uh, something else that, that I'm thinking about, I'm remembering back they had an AMA with, the, with this team, gosh, I want to say it was about two months ago now, which feels like ages uh, in the crypto yeah. space. But it was during one of the first big booms of jewel i think it was on its initial run up to ten dollars and they talked about you know it, it wasn't that um it wasn't that they suddenly it was the um influx of having the ability to um bring in other tokens into the game is what they believe contributed towards um you, you know that that sudden influx of, of people buying jewel and so oh, right. in, in a very similar way you know as we're going through hopefully the worst of the jewel dips that we're going to see this year um that, that they're talking about some of these new development projects that will ultimately bring uh, stability to the token and uh, be beneficial for for all of us as as a token stakeholder so that that's pretty neat and I guess I hadn't thought of it that way, but it's kind of like, you know, if, if you're a, an entrepreneur in the, you know, the physical world, not in the, the crypto space, and you get, you know, a deal with a new company, like say you now all of a sudden your product's stocked on the shelves of Walgreens or something, I mean, you're, you're going to reach a whole lot more users right. than you would have otherwise. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's really interesting. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and what, uh, what's next on, on your AMA notes? All right, last one here, and I'm particularly excited about this, especially, you know, since we're just talking about possibly reaching new users, I think this one's huge. They talked about a building a fiat on-ramp so that you would possibly be able to just take your dollars and purchase Jewel in-game and avoid that whole mess of trying to find a, an exchange and, you know, ex withdrawing it out. It, for a lot of people who are, especially those people, like some of my friends who, you know, aren't really in this game yet, it's a little, uh, they're hesitant because of all the wallet management. Um, this would help a lot. I mean, they're used to like Robinhood, for example, where you just buy it and sell it, and that's that's that. I think this could open the door to a lot more people. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I I think this would be pretty big. Every time I'm trying to get someone else involved, if they have not been in the crypto space <laughs> for more than six months, it's just a, a straight up hard pass in terms of the learning curve of getting into this. And I don't know, I guess maybe I'm dating myself a little bit <laughs> with the crowd that I'm hanging out with. But um, yeah, yeah I, I, I think this is fantastic. Well, wow, that's really exciting. And, and I want to mention one last point about this too. They were very explicit in both talking with other blockchains and the fiat on-ramp providers that they will only do it, it seemed like, if there is a cost share so that they can feed some of the fees that a user would pay back into the Quest Fund and back to x -Jewel holders, which was huge. I guess I, I never even really had considered that. You know, when you 
buy uh, crypto with fiat, you know, usually it's just the owning company of whatever that exchange is just taking that profit. But DFK kind of seemed like they wanted it to make sure that at least they get some of those fees to, you know, to reward the actual in-game holders, which is awesome too. Yeah, which which makes sense because that's how all of their other, you know, kind of transaction systems really are, are designed to, you know, to keep that um, powering, uh, you know, the, the in-game systems. You know, it, it's pretty pretty interesting on, on that note. Um, it sounds like the the garden reward pools are still pretty stable. Um, in terms of you know the transactions powering those and and it's seeing growth instead of you know uh, depleting its reserves so that's that's fantastic that they're, they're thinking you know as we've said before a, a couple steps ahead so uh, pretty cool there yeah right. absolutely well let's go to the the combat corner and leveling up um you you let me know that you had a, a couple level fives and, and you took a, a snapshot here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and jump over screens and, and show a quick Discord image here. Uh, right now I have on, on screen uh, Jaxena Slate Slayer. Uh, What's your <laughs> yeah. monk here? Level five. Yep. Is this a Fisher? Yeah, uh, yeah. So that one's my, she's my number one forager. Oh, nice, nice. All right, so um, on the on the columns here, there's of course the uh, primary growth, secondary growth, bonus, uh, which is of course the the guy's blessing that uh, you choose, and then the the rarity bonus on on the side. So for maybe those of uh, the listeners uh, who aren't as familiar with the level up system, can you walk us through what does the rarity column mean, and and how is this calculated? That's right. Yeah, so I think we, we might have talked a little bit about this with Mr. Zipper in the past, I believe, but was it him? I think it was, I yeah. I think it was, yeah. Um, but effectively, it's uh, every five levels, you, know, you get extra rarity bonuses, and it, it, it goes up. So funny story about this. This was actually my second uh, hero to hit level five. My first was the old uh, ninja, common ninja fisher that I've been talking about in the past that just keeps just pulling in items. Uh, but unfortunately, as a common, he got no bonus, so it was like a anticlimactic level five, I guess. Um, <laughs> but uh, but this one here, yeah, she she uh, used her rare uh, rarity in order to gain that extra four rolls of stats, which I was really happy. Kind of countered the otherwise, I would say, somewhat crappy roll that I got on her level up. So uh, as far as how it's calculated, that part. Uh, I don't know. The, the way that they word it is very confusing. I think it's actually relatively simple. I think you just, uh, what is it? For uncommon, you get, is it two extra? Do you remember? I'm, uh, I'm trying to reach Off the here. top of my head, no. But let me see how I can pull up the docs. I want to say it was like two, four, six. I want to say it would jump by twos for whatever reason I'm thinking. But yeah, you basically get extra rolls, and it just can't be stats. They have to sp spread across the stats following certain criteria basically to try to give your uh more rare heroes more general leveling across all stats not just class specific stats i think is the is the takeaway though yeah I'll, um, one second here i'll bring it up i think Maybe it's in the rarity section of the docs. Yeah, all I can't right. remember. No, where I can't find it. That's, uh, that's yeah, all right. I, mean, I think you, you touched on it uh, pretty well, and uh, of course, I you know go go read the docs um, if you, if you want the exact details on it. Um, you, you come here for the hot takes, not for the data. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well. Um, I think that about wraps it up for us. Any uh, any closing comments that, that you have for our listeners? Um, I think the only other thing that really didn't I hadn't discussed that I was kind of thinking, you know, we we talked about the jewel price going down, right? And and I think you know we'd also talked about the Gen Zero prices dropping, and um, maybe with this price of jewel turning around, uh, 
before it does, if we see hero prices go up in terms of jewel, not in terms of like actual dollar value, um, anybody I would say who's holding more rare heroes that they intend to sell, I mean, I think this might be one of your last great opportunities. Again, if the hero prices go up, um, I just say that because I got super lucky right before jewel prices kind of started exploding because of all the avalanche announcements. And I had that common three or three sage that I ended up selling for like, I want to say it was like 775 jewel. And nice. now if you look at them, they're like 300 jewel and, and you know, and, and with the price declines, you know, you're kind of right back to where you would have been at the time I sold. So keep an eye on that listeners. If you see those, those hero prices go up and you got heroes you want to unload, I don't know that we're going to have a lot of opportunities moving forward. I think this price is going to keep going. Yeah, that, that's a great point. We're really not that far away from, you know, some significant changes happening in the game. And, and hopefully that leads to, you know, Jewel uh, bouncing back a little bit right now with our, our Bark Keep Blessing bot. Uh, we're looking at Jewel around just above $8. So, um, yep. yeah, that, that's, a, that's a fantastic point that, you know, now is really the, the time to be in Jewel accumulation mode. Hold on to that and, you know, go ahead and, and reap some of those profits, hopefully when, when that bounces back up. So... Uh, great, great advice for the, the listeners out there, and you know, for for those of you um, who you know, we're we're all in this together. We're we're a community, and uh, it certainly has has been a, a little bit of a uh, a scary last couple days. Um, but hang in there, and and this is normal for for crypto markets, and so. Um, uh, well, it's not financial advice, but it feels normal for crypto markets. And, uh, you know, I'm hanging in there still, still uh, very bullish about the game and kind of glad that, that we heard these, these AMA notes. So uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, all right. Well, um, I guess that's, that's it for us from Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms. Uh, this is Raf and Nindorf signing out. <laughs>